Welcome to the Women in Weightlifting podcast. Join Mark House and Christy Brewer as they learn the stories of USAW's elite female athletes. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am here with Christy Brewer, and we're joined today with by Joelle Emery, one of our masters lifters in the 59 kilo weight category. And Joel, we're gonna we're gonna have to start just by an explanation of your Instagram tag. So welcome to the podcast. And then Traps of an Angry Bear. I, I, I've been wondering this for quite a period of time. Uh, let's hear what's what's the explanation on your Instagram tag? Um, so when I first started um CrossFit and kind of gaining a lot of muscle mass, um, one of the places that was the biggest one was my traps. Um partly from pulling so much in my lift. Luckily that's gotten a lot better. Um, so one of my teammates kind of just started joking around about how my traps were like an angry bear. Um, and I just started to embrace it and just decided to roll with it as my Instagram handle and it just stuck. So. Well, awesome. you know, Christie's is like, Hey, mighty. Mine is yeah. like, that was the speaker. And yours is traps of, yeah. an, angry bear. Like, traps oh. of an angry bear. Yep. Just, just, <laughs> just out there <laughs> so th- that's always our opening question is you know how did you get into weightlifting and, and so give us a little bit about give us give us some of your history um so I was an athlete growing up um I played three sports through high school and then in college um I went to Tufts and I played soccer so um after graduating was the first time that I was not doing something physical um, so I worked, I went to grad school, I got really out of shape, um, and I moved to Michigan. And um, the first person who I met was a CrossFitter. Um, and so just in talking with her, saying that I missed doing stuff, I missed working out, I missed being part of a team, um, she, she suggested that I check out CrossFit. Um, so I went and I checked it out and I was immediately hooked. So through CrossFit, I learned the lifts, obviously, um, and then started enjoying those more and more. Um, in 2015, January of 2015, I did my first weightlifting meet and fell in love with that um, and was doing both pretty competitive CrossFit and weightlifting um, until winter of 2018. Um, so after the CrossFit Open of 2018, I decided to take time off from CrossFit leading up to that year's nationals and then decide after nationals what I wanted to do. Um, And I added, I think like 12 kilos onto my total from when I started resting from CrossFit. And I was like, okay, I'm done with CrossFit. Um, And I haven't looked back since. So I've been weightlifting full time since uh, March of 2018. Oh, that's like roughly time I met you. So yeah. Yep. I didn't realize that that was when you made the, made the full-time switch over. Yep. How old are you now? And how old are you when you started? I am 35 now. So this is my first year as a master's athlete. Um, so I did my, yeah. So I did my first weightlifting competition (laughs) at 29. Yeah. Yeah, The whole, I mean, getting into the competition later, I, I, you know, Christy was like that. She, we were talking to her and, and, you know, she was got into this at, what'd you say? 34. Christine? I was 35, 35 when I started. Yeah, it's interesting to see see how you see the the athletes coming back back into um, you know being competitive sports as you know kind of mature athletes. So you said you played for soccer for Tufts. Is that where you went? To I did. Yeah. What do uh, what What do you do? Um, that's one of the things we actually you know I, I talk to the athletes all the time and I, and and we know what you do on the platform, but what do you, what do you do outside of uh, of weightlifting? So I actually am a full-time coach. Um, oh, okay. My background, yeah, my background in education is in, so my undergrad was child development and psychology. And then I got my grad degree in mental health counseling and behavioral medicine with a focus on children, adolescents, and families. Um, so I worked as a counselor for a period of time. And then when I moved out to Michigan, my licensure actually didn't translate. Um, and my plan was only to be in Michigan for two years. So I decided that I would kind of do something else just for the two years that I was out here. And then when I moved back to the East coast, I would go back into counseling. Um, life had some other plans and I ended up staying out here. Um, and in 2014, I started coaching CrossFit and then just kind of spiraled from there. Um, and moved 
into weightlifting, coaching weightlifting. Um, I do some nutrition counseling on the side too, but this is my full-time gig. Wow. I, 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 I didn't realize that you were a full-time weightlifting coach. I mean, I know you coach, mm-hmm. you coach at Lily Weightlifting, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the gym's Lily Weightlifting. We're in Ann Arbor. Um, I primarily run our youth and junior program and obviously help out with the adults too, but I love, uh, I love our juniors and our kids. It's where my passion is for sure. Yeah. Coach, coaching that age is fun. Yeah. Yeah. My passion is youth. I love youth, youth, like the beginners. I'm a fan of the beginners, the kids, um, especially youth girls. Those are my. That's my actually kids. that's actually why I built our gym, was to like coach, like youth girls, especially like troubled youth girls. Yeah, uh, that was where we, cool. kind of where we started. But yeah, so I have a passion for that same same kind of group. Um, Hey, Christy, I'll let you take over. I was looking for our list of questions. Um, yeah, so I was curious to know about like your training schedule. Um, like how often do you train? Is there certain things you do for recovery? Um, I train now four days a week. So I was training five days a week um, as a, I guess, now older athlete. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's funny because I've never thought of 35 as old, but then in weightlifting, you know, we're tech, I'm a master's athlete now. Um, you've seen what our sessions are like. I am. You've seen what our <laughs> sessions are like at nationals. Like it's you and me and then a bunch of 20 year olds. Um, yep. So. <laughs> After um, AO in December, we decided to drop training down. So I was training five days a week. We decided to give four days a week ago um, and see how that was. And my body's been reacting a lot better. I feel like my recovery has been a lot better. Um, So I train Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, Monday and Friday are you are usually heavier days for me. So Monday is usually like a heavier snatch focus day. Friday is usually a heavier um, clean and jerk focus day. And then the other days are kind of technique squats, things like that. Um, So that's been working out really well for me. I think there's like a, you know, it's easy to feel like more is better. Um, And I was scared to to drop that day. I was like, I'm going to lose strength and I'm going to lose gains. And, um, but at some point you have to, you have to see where your body is and how it reacts and more is yeah. not, not always better. Yeah. I think that's one of the craziest things because I remember seeing people go nine, 11 sessions a week, just constantly every day, double days. And so I always felt like I was starting behind a starting behind because I started at 35. And so I was like, Oh, like I'm going to just jump in and do all those sessions. And I was so beat yeah. that it was awful. And it's also, I love hearing athletes that are actually training less and doing better because it really is like finding what is best for you. Um, Yeah, there's been quite a few I've been shocked with, even younger ones um, who are training less. So it's interesting. The recovery. Yeah, I mean, yeah, everyone's different, right? And everyone's bodies are going to react differently. But at some point there's, you know, a loss to doing more, but not being able to put as much into those sessions as yep. dropping that day and being able to commit and be more present and be better in training. So. Yep. And do you do anything on your off days or are you just, are you genuinely off? Um, I am off. I work a second job on my days off from the gym, yeah. um, but, but physically I am off. Yes. I will do um, like some Rama and I'll walk my dog, but I, I don't do any accessories. I don't do any like active rest or anything like that. I'm off. That's good. So I, 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 we're talking about kind of what the average day looks like for you. I mean, so you, you, you are actually working a second job. I am. I am. Um, on my day, so the gym's closed Thursdays and Sundays. Um, so I do that on Thursdays and Sundays. And then kind of an average day, I usually open at the gym. So I wake up at five. Um, I'm at the gym at six. Our first session starts at six. So I'm there by six. Um, we're open until 1030. So I'm at the gym from six to 1030. And then we're closed in the middle of the day. Um, I head back into the gym at 330. And then usually I have kids from like 3.30 to 5. Um, I'll train at 5 until 6 to 6.30. And then right now I'm running a little youth class, like a U10 youth class, um, three days a week. So that's 6.30 to 7.10 that I do that. 
Um, so I kind of sneak my training in around training the kids in the afternoon. Yeah, this is, I mean, that's just a long day. Yeah, it is. I mean, I definitely like have the luxury to nap in the middle of the day, which is <laughs> nice. Um, so if I'm feeling really wiped, I'll take, I'll take a little nap from like 12 to two. Um, but yeah, I don't spend a ton of time at home and then it's just long, like at the end. So being up at five and then usually we close at the gym at eight. So I'll get home at like eight 30, um, nine. And I try to be in bed by nine 30. So. Yeah. yeah. That's, that, that's just a, that's just a long, that's a long day. Yeah. I mean, what, what, I mean, with that kind of just time at the, you know, at the gym, what do you do to recover? What's re um, both physically and mentally? I mean, that's a, that's oh, a, net, hold on. Meredith is, oh up. boy. Oh, okay. <laughs> hold on. We're pausing this show to watch Meredith online lift. <laughs> so she's taking she's walking onto the platform. I'm gonna pause the recording for a second. Meredith. All right, we're resuming. We just watched Meredith Allwine uh, secure a gold medal in the uh, clean and jerk in total at the Pan American Championships with a, a, a pretty convincing 135. Um, almost got 139. So, yeah, I love to watch watch other athletes. It was fun. Speaking of other athletes, since we are talking about the 59 kilo weight class, right? Um, Joel, did you get to see Taylor lift on Tuesday? I did watch it. Just amazing. That was just next level. It yeah. was so amazing. I mean, 122. Like, whoa. Yeah. Like, like it's I would convincing. I told her, I told her I would have been shocked at 120. Yeah. And then you put 122. I was like, <laughs> like laughing. Like, are you kidding? So it was I, I was on, texting with, uh, Bobby Circus, who works with Taylor a lot and during the competition. And we're like, does she take 120? No, there's no reason to take 120 at this point. I mean, you know, it doesn't do anything for her. And so it's, you know, sorry to go up to 121. And then, you know, one, Bobby and I are both like, yeah, 122 puts her on the podium. Um, uh, is that why? Is that why it was 122? I, I have to assume that that was, I mean, I don't know the thought process, right? I don't do much. Well, I'm saying like if she was two kilos under, it wouldn't have put her on the podium. Right. Oh, that that session it was two eighteen gold, two seventeen silver, two seventeen bronze, two seventeen fourth place. So it was mm. one kilo separating the top four athletes. And so it was just depending on who hit it first, right? And so so she hit it second. She hit it. She hit it second. So crazy how close yeah. that competition was. That was a fun session. Yeah, yeah, that was, I, I mean, I, I was telling Bobby, I'm like, I wish I spoke Spanish so I could understand it because the announcers were really good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I was, um, so I helped her through a water cut for the Pan Ams. And she was telling me, she's like, I don't know if I'll be in the A session. She thought she was potentially going to be in the B session. And I was like, I didn't know, obviously, I don't know who was there in the session. And I was like, whatever. <laughs> He's definitely not the pizza. <laughs> yeah, I, that's that's super odd. I mean, I, I yeah, I don't know. I don't know the thought process. I just know it came up in conversation because we were kept juggling, like loading and cutting, and I was like, well, the day like the days were flopped. Mm. Like she would have to cut an entire day earlier. <laughs> I was like, we need to know. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, I get you. So, so uh, anyway, I, we're we're doing. Yeah. A show we're about digressing. Taylor. We're talking to Taylor next week, actually. But um, we'll go back to... So, Joel, I mean, what, what do you walk around at? Mid-61 to low 62s. So, 63 was a tough class for me. I was never just... I was just never really able to fill that out very well. Um, but then 58 was just really, really light for me. Brutal. Um, yeah, it was... I did it once. And we were like, absolutely never again. Um <laughs> Yeah. And then when they changed the weight classes, I was like 64. There's just no way. 59 is I'm I'm still pretty small. It's not super. I water cut to get down to 59. Um, I'm pretty I'm pretty lean down there. But filling out those girls who are 64s, I just feel like are so much bigger than I am. 
I wish it was 60. I was really yeah. open for a 60 kilo. Yeah. That's where it should be. I want 60. I think it should yeah. be every five. It would just be easy if it was an even five because then you have like these odd jumps, 64 to 71. That's not fair. But who am I to say? I just show up to play. <laughs> no, but I mean, you make, you make an interesting point. I mean, it's like the you go from 55 to 59. Which is four. Uh, a four kilo mm -hmm. jump. Um, you have 49 to 55, which is percentage-wise a much larger jump. Right. And then you get into like, you know, 59 to 64 is actually fine. And then 64 to 71 is like more than a 10% jump too. And, and some of the, some of the way they split that up just didn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but we, we won't get me off on ranting about the IWF. <laughs> That's probably not a useful official <laughs> use of our time. <laughs> I can do that for hours. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm curious, Joella, um, or Joelle, I just called you Joella. Um, so like what makes you, like got you into weightlifting? What was intriguing about it? What keeps you going? Like why weightlifting? Um, so it was really the first like individual sport that I did. So playing sports, I did soccer, basketball, softball. So all team sports. Yep. Um, so this is my first time really like competing as an individual and it was absolutely terrifying but then also like amazing at the same time yeah. um so that was a whole different kind of like mental space for me to be in um which I really liked and I think just the um I don't want to say that's linear because obviously you know weightlifting is very not linear mm -hmm. um but being able to see improvements um even not necessarily on maximal weights lifted, but being able to see those like technical improvements, um, being able to see like consistency at higher weights, things like that, um, just really fit into my type A brain personality. Um, so I love that piece of it. And I think also it's just, um, it's really changed the way that I think about like my body and strength um and it's given me a new appreciation for what my body does instead of being focused on like what it looks like what i weigh mm -hmm. um things like that that's cool um which makes me think like how is like nutrition do you have a plan do, are you just set like i feel nutrition i didn't get nutrition until i got into weightlifting um because i was like wow nutrition totally affects performance and before that, I was clueless. Um, so yeah, I think nutrition is super intriguing. Yeah, I was also pretty clueless. Um, I when I got into CrossFit, I went into the whole paleo thing. Yeah. Um, so I ate a ton of protein all the time and became and very bacon? tired of carbs. So much bacon. Um, <laughs> so much bacon. And then, um, at my, so at my second weightlifting meet, I qualified for American Open Finals. So 2015 AO Finals. Um, and so I was really worried about having to make weight and I didn't want it, even though I was so light. I was just like, I don't want to show up and spend all this time and money and get there and not make weight. Um, so I started with RP actually yeah. then uh, leading up to that meet. And I've done RP ever since. Um, Cool. I am probably a little bit more relaxed now, like during maintenance periods than I used to be. I used to be like a hundred percent all the time. I have to like eat down to the gram. Um, and that, that was not super healthy. Um, yep. so being able to be a little bit more relaxed and maintenance and then stick to it and go a hundred percent, um, leading up to meets has worked out really well for me. So usually like six to six to eight weeks out from meets, I start cutting down um i get down like into the mid 60s and then i water mm. cut the rest oh nice yeah i think that's a good strategy and that's a lot where i feel is a super healthy like cut a little bit and then water cut but yeah, yeah. we have so many similarities it's crazy i remember yeah ao final 2015 ao finals was my first competition like national competition and i was petrified of missing weight yeah. And I weighed, I weighed in at like 61. Yeah, same. 
It has a 64. Or is it a 63? Yeah. I was a 63 because I was literally terrified, terrified of missing weight. And so I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like you just see what people are doing on the gram and you try to mimic it and it's so wrong and you have no idea what you're doing. But yeah. Joel, do you you follow, like to talk to the athletes about because what what do you do the day of? Um, You know, are you, are you watching competitions? Are you in the, are you just sitting in your hotel room, like in your own head? What do you do? Pretty much. Um, I don't, I found that I don't like watching competitions the day of. Um, it just makes me too, like I get too excited. Yep. Um, and the, there's too much adrenaline throughout the day. And then I'm tired by the time um, I get the competition. So I try to sleep as long as possible. Um, and then I wake up, uh, check weight. I hang out in the hotel room. I try to stay off social media. Um, Actually leading up to AO finals this year, I did like a four weeks out with no social media and it helped me so much. Like I loved it. I'm going to do that before all of my competitions now. Um, I'll do like crosswords, read books, hang out, watch TV, um, just eat. And I just lay really low until weigh in. Yeah, it seems to be kind of a recurring theme is like staying off social media. Don't watch what everybody else is doing mm-hmm. um, because it just gets it's, in your head. Yeah, it's just really easy to fall into the trap of just like seeing what everyone else is doing and comparing yourself and taking that to mean something else. Like, oh my God, this person just snatched this like three weeks out and I feel like crap and why am I not snatching that? And it yes. just leads into literally nothing yeah it's just not helpful or healthy um and maybe there's people who can balance that well I'm not one of them um so just staying off was a lot better and just helped me be focused on where I was and what I was doing and I mean at the end of the day it's still it's an individual sport and there's so much that comes into where your headspace is at that you just have to be in a place where like I can only control what I'm doing on the platform. I can't control what other people are doing anyway. So worrying about it is not beneficial. It's just wasted energy. So that leads me to our kind of our, our next question, which is, you know, what, what do you do? You're in, you're back in the warm up room. You know, you're warming up. Um, you know, or do you talk to other people back there? And then, you know, when you hear <laughs> when I call your name, because um, <laughs> it's always my. Name. It's always Mark. <laughs> Tell me about that minute. What what is going to? How do you get from you know? Walk me through your you you know your warm up sessions or, and then take me through that that last minute before you're you know you hit the big you know the big lift. Um. So I have created a really great playlist on Spotify that I love. Um. I've Come gone through. All, yes. I've. <laughs> gone through a lot of different music options and finally found a playlist that's like a really good balance for me. Um, So I have my headphones in, I have my music in. I don't like talking to other people at all. Like some people are super chatty back there. That's not my personality. Um, So in between lifts, I'm kind of just like focused on my music really um, because that helps take me out of my head. And then when I go up for like warm up lifts, usually I'll just repeat like one or two cues for myself that I want to be thinking of um so a lot of times I'm just like okay midfoot pull down and that's literally all that I'm thinking of as warm-up lifts are going um I try to be just like positive um and be like oh that one felt great that was a really good one like I totally smoked that just positive self-talk um and then when I go out for my opener or for my list, one of the things that's really helped me lately is I try to think about like, I've earned the opportunity to take that attempt on the platform. So whatever's on the bar on the platform, it wouldn't be on the bar on the platform if I hadn't made my lifts leading up to it, if I hadn't been consistent with that weight leading up to this competition. Um, So putting it in that term in my head, like that's up there because I've earned that opportunity for that Mm -hmm. to be up there um calms me down a lot and then I'm just like okay yep that's that's mine let's go lift that like let's go do that that's awesome I mean that's kind of an that's 
different than what we've you know what we hear it seems like the the warm-up room seems to be almost I won't say universal, but there's a lot of, everybody seems to be very focused on what they're doing, but that transition from like walking out onto the platform is, is varies a lot from athlete to athlete in terms of like where your headspace is. And as, you know, as an outsider in that, in that process, but probably the closest person in the venue to seeing it happen, I just Mm -hmm. find it really interesting how all of you get you know, what do you, what are you going through mentally as you're walking out onto the platform? Cause you know, what I see, and you know, Christy has her routines and, and, you know, which I find, fa- which I find fascinating by the way. Um, but yeah, so it's interesting to hear, to, to hear that that's the mental space that you're in um, to go out and hit a lift. Um, and I think like, you know, for a lot of people, this is probably true, but the more, the better I feel, the less my head is actually going. So the better I feel and the better warm ups are going and things like that, like the more quiet my head actually is. So like yeah. I'll go out and I'll take a lift and like I'll put the bar down and it's like I, I don't even remember what just happened. Like did we make that? What what just happened? Um, <laughs> so, fast. so the better kind of things are going, the really the quieter my head is. Um, I have to work harder to quiet my head down when I'm not feeling good or when things aren't going as well. Yeah. Now, do you have a physical routine that you go through? I mean, is there like some, you know, some chain of events physically where you walk out onto the platform and do X, Y, and Z every single time? Yeah, for sure. And like, I noticed that after lockdown, after training in my garage, it it got longer. Like I got a lot more, like more fidgety um, after I trained in my garage. But yeah, like I'll chalk and then I'll walk back and forth from the stage and then stand in the front take a couple deep breaths, um, say a couple things in my head. I walk out onto the platform. Like I always step under the bar, left foot first, right foot first, and then like <laughs> grab, grab left bar, right bar first. Um, so yeah, those, those things are definitely pretty ingrained. Um, and then in terms of like, once I'm down there, you know, holding onto the bar, there's no like set time. I just kind of wait until... I feel ready. Like I'll take a couple of deep breaths and then just pull and push and pull, push and go. Sounds good. <laughs> I'm curious. Um, what do you do to come back from a miss lift? Oh yeah. That's a good question. Um, so I try to take emotion out of it. Um, mm-hmm. that helps me the most. I'll be like, okay, I missed that lift because my hips came up first or I missed that lift because I got behind the bar. Um, so if I break it down into like a technical reason that I missed the lift, then I feel a lot better going into the next one. Like, okay, my hips got up early on the next one. I just have to stay mid foot and push with my chest up and I'll be fine. Um, so that's taken a lot of work for me, probably like in the past year and a half that would have previously like really sent me spiraling. Um, so I've done a lot of work in training to train my brain to be like that, like okay, it's fine that I missed that. I can make the correction on the next lift. Um, because once your head's out of it, you're, you're in a rough place. No. Um, so the bigger, you know, the bigger issue is controlling your head so that you can get out and make the lift. Like our bodies know what to do. There's a weight on the bar that 99% likely we're physically capable of making. Um, mm-hmm. So it's really controlling your head to be in that space to let your body do what it needs to do. Yeah. So, Which I just came up with a really good question to end. So when we are ready, I I have the last one question. Okay, well, I've got a couple more things that I, that, I, that we want to talk about. <laughs> so um, one, given that you're a master's lifter, what, what advice would you give to 10-year-old you? I mean, I'm not sure 10-year-old me would listen to anything. But... <laughs> I didn't say that to be... <laughs> and he, has, he just took my question. That was supposed to be my ending question. What would you tell your younger self? I'm sorry, Christy. He's Mark. I think you do the pet peeve one last. <laughs> yeah, we can do that one too. Um, honestly, I think I would tell 10-year-old me that A, it's okay to be strong. Um, I was a very strong girl who was embarrassed about being stronger than boys. Um, <laughs> so I think that's okay to be strong. And I guess just to trust myself. 
I think like there's so much pressure for kids and girls um, to fit in and not stick out and not be too strong and not be too loud and follow a very specific um, life path that's set forward. Um, and I think we do a lot of girls like a really big disservice by not just encouraging them to kind of embrace what they have and who they are. Um, so I, I wish that 10 year old me had appreciated my strength a lot more. Um, even 20 year old me or 25 year old me, I'm there now, but it took a while. <laughs> yeah. Age will do that for you, but yeah, that's, that's a really, really good point. Um, okay. A couple of quick questions. Uh, you just, you finished the big, the, the big meet, you know, so you finished nationals, you've hit your 200 kilo total because you're going to do that yeah. at nationals. Uh, yeah. And what's your favorite indulgence? Oh man, all the food, <laughs> all the food. <laughs> Any particular um, food? So honestly, I have, I, if I had to eat one food for the rest of my life, probably it would be tater tots. I love tater tots <laughs> so much. <laughs> I love tater tots. I love them. <laughs> So, girl, girl, but it's okay <laughs> yeah um so like fried food definitely that's that's a big go-to for me fried food and then usually like something really really sweet like chocolate cake or a donut or something like that um but yeah definitely I you could probably find me eating a large plate of french fries or tater tots well, you, the, my, my, my offer, of course, still stands. Is, you know, if you hit the 200 kilo total, I, I will take you out to Ruth's Chris for dinner. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready for it. <laughs> um, okay. Um, music. Like when you're coming out onto the platform, what do you want to be listening to? I mean, this is probably pretty different from what other people like coming out onto a platform, but um, my like playlist my pump up playlist is very like uh happy um so like lady gaga pink uh whitney houston like yeah. really just like upbeat strong women music is what i love to listen to any particular like any particular song um i mean anything with lady gaga i'm born this way i love um whitney houston want to dance with somebody <laughs> I love Whitney Houston, man. We need to bring back the old school. Right? <laughs> what I'm saying. Whitney Houston was never my favorite artist, but. What? Oh, <laughs> I'm all about like girl bands, little boy bands. Remember like NSYNC and all that stuff? Oh, I'm yeah. so for yeah. it. I'm all for here. <laughs> Justin Bieber? Yeah. <laughs> See, I'm, 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 I'm actually a Katy Perry junkie. <laughs> there you go. I, She's I, good I, too. I, we did a she fits in there. She fits in there. <laughs> yeah, we did a lip sync battle a couple of years ago as a fundraiser, and, and I did of the full on, you know, roar bikini. Yeah, and, and I, love no. I love it. I love it. If you're gonna do, if you're gonna go to go, go hard, right? Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, part of the reason I ask about music is I'm I'm actually trying to get the get them to play certain music for certain athletes when they come out. Um, and awesome. so, like a walkout song. Yeah, we, you will have your own walkout song. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, so two songs, one for one for like your your third attempt snatch, one for your third attempt. Right. And I'm trying to coordinate that. That's uh, awesome. So it should be kind of cool. All right, Christy, last question. All right. Well, since you stole my thunder, the <laughs> the other one is, um, what is one of your pet peeves? And it can be weightless. Actually, let's stick it to weightlifting related. What is a weightlifting pet peeve? A weightlifting pet peeve. Um, people walking in front of me when I'm lifting. And is that like in training or a certain situation always? Um, more training. Like, you know, if it's light, it's fine. But like, if I'm above like 85% and I'm about to lift and I look up and there's someone like three feet from me, it just, that drives me crazy. Yeah. Um, you're I see all the time your kids are like playing in front of you so you're yeah. totally used to that um but that definitely like you know for me that's just like a respect thing from other people in the gym and your teammates you know yeah if you're going for I think a, a lot of it yeah for me I always tell people I for me majority of the time totally fine but I agree like once you get heavy there's a certain thing about being in your team finding the focal point Mm -hmm. and just headspace and so it's one right. more thing you have to filter um 
And so, yeah, like when I get heavy, my, I'm always like, all right, kids, mom needs time. Yeah. <laughs> Go inside, <laughs> find a show. I'm all about that. Right. I'm during training, but yeah, I agree. Well, Joelle, thank you very much for joining us this morning. And um, we will see you at the national championships. See you guys in Detroit. Thank you for having me.